Recently, I was doing some work for a client that involved encrypting data, transferring it to a remote system so it was protected, and then decrypting on the remote system. And I made a mistake while I was doing that. Now, it took a little while for the mistake to surface for me to know that I actually made the mistake. Once I found the problem, I knew exactly what I had done, but it made me think that maybe other people are bumping into this, and unless they know exactly how this works, they might be a little stuck in resolving the problem. So I've made this video to take you through the key issues of using encryption and hashing on MetaTrader 4 and 5. I will be using MetaTrader 5 for the demonstration, but all of this applies equally to MetaTrader 4. So let's jump into the editor now and we'll have a look at the code. Now, I'm using the MetaTrader 5 editor to demonstrate this, but all the code that I'm going to show is absolutely identical for MetaTrader 4 and 5. Everything here is the same. So I've created a simple script. I've just called it encryption.mq5, and the file is completely empty at the moment. What I'm going to do is just type in code, and then hit F1 to get the help on that. So here's the crypt encode help for MQL5, and here is a piece of sample code, and this is exactly the same sample code that is provided in the help for MetaTrader 4. I'm just going to copy this entire example, put the help away now, and paste it in here. And now if I compile that, everything compiles, and I'll run it, and we'll see the results. So the MetaTrader 5, initial data, size 44, string the quick brown fox, so on. The encoded data, and this is not the actual encoded data, this has been converted to hex. There's a routine in that script that converts to hex. And then converted back again, and we get the same string. Great, everything worked. The first thing you might notice here, though, is that the encoded data is size 48, and the decoded data is size 48, but the original data is only size 44. That is simply because... As part of the encryption, you get an extra length string, and then when it's converted back, there are some zeros or null characters at the end, which are simply ignored. So you get the same string back, although this size 48 relates to the size of the UCHAR array that's holding the result rather than the actual string. If you were to convert this back, you would get a real string length. But let me add a bit more diagnostic just to show what I'm talking about with that. So back in the editor, and I have done a little reformatting just to make it a little easier to read. Here is the array to hex function that I mentioned converts that string to hex. I'm just going to take that initially and move it to the end of the code because we don't need to worry about that again. Now in this print format, so it shows initial data size equals and the string equals, and that's what showed the 44 length. I'm going to change this a little. So I've added the text size, percent %d, and the original was the array size here, where you can see it was showing the array size of SRC, which is after this string to char array converting text, which is that original quick brown fox statement, converts that into SRC, which is a uchar array. So originally it was just showing the size of that array, and then it was also showing the char array to string, so converting that array back to the text to see that it was the same string that we started with. I've just modified the print format statement here a little to also show the original length of that text with the string len and to show the actual text as well. And while I'm here, I'm going to do the same for the key because this is important. Okay, so I'm displaying the same data for the key, the size of the original text of the key, the size of the array created from that, and then the actual text of the key string and the char array to string back of the key. Other than that, no changes to the encryption. I'm just going to compile this. I didn't make any errors, and I'll run that. And now new lines are here. So this was the initial line for initial data, size equals 44, string equals. Here's the new line, text size equals 43. 
array size 44. If you count it, the actual characters in this text are 43 characters, but the array size is showing as 44. The array is the same as the text, so there's no change being made to that text, but there's a difference of one character in the array compared to the size of the text. That is important, and we'll come back again to it later, but this happens because strings in MetaTrader are zero terminated, or null terminated. So while there are 43 visible characters here, Internally, that string has one more character. When this gets converted with a simple string to char array, that additional terminating character is included in the array. So this is why we get 44 as the array size. When we print that array out with the char array to string, that null at the end actually becomes the terminator for the new string, and so we don't see it. And that's why these two strings look the same but there is a difference of one character between the original text size and the array size. And I printed the key just to show that the same thing is happening here. The original text size, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, is only seven characters, but there is an array size of eight. And everything still works. And we still get this size 48 at the end with the data and the string comes back as the same thing. So that's all still working. Now I'm going to try to break this so back to the code, we know that this string is seven characters long. I'm going to break it in two different ways. Let me just make it shorter to begin with. A, B, C, D, E, compile, run. And now the original key text size five, array size six, A, B, C, D, E, error code 4006. Some of you may already know why this is happening. It is because the key is not long enough for the encryption. Let me go back here to the code. This encryption uses crypt des. Crypt des needs a 56-bit key plus eight bits of parity. 56-bit key, that's seven bytes. My key is only five. And remember, we get that extra one for the terminating character, so I've actually got six here which is not enough, I need at least seven. The example that's in the help conveniently works until you know this, because if you try to use a very simple key, you'll get a problem here. If I just increase that by one character though, now I have six characters here plus the zero terminator character. If I compile that and run, then everything works again. I'll just clear this data now. The next thing I'm going to do just to help with the demonstrations, this is using crypt des. I'm going to take that and make it a variable. No actual changes to what's happening here. I've just embedded a variable there so that I can easily change the encryption method if I want to. So now I have seven characters and that's great. Let me just compile and run. Everything works fine. I'm going to change the encryption method. And there are four encryption methods available. There's AES-128, AES-256, ArchZip, DES that we've been using. Then there are these three hash methods. I'll come back to those because they're not strictly encryption, they're hashing. And Base64, which is a simple conversion. So I'm just going to go to AES-128 to begin with. Compile and run, and back to an error code here. And that's because AES-128 needs a much longer key than DES. In fact, AES-128 needs a 128-bit key, and AES-256, not surprisingly, needs a 256-bit key. The exception to those is the arch zip, which has no minimum key length, I guess other than one. If I compile that for arch zip and run, and you see it's quite happy to do that. So that's the second thing. First is that remembering that the strings have a zero terminator, and the second is that the key needs to be long enough. So what am I gonna do about the key? Let's start with that. I'll just introduce this variable, crypt key len. 
uh, set that to zero and now I'm going to put a case statement in here where I will actually increase the length of this key to match this length based on the encryption method. That's another reason I put the encryption method up here. I originally just had the seven there, but I'm just going to make this number of bits divided by eight just because it's a little bit more descriptive. 128 needs 128 bits divided by eight and 256 needs obviously 256 bits divided by 8. I have an if statement here if the crypt key length is greater than 0 because I started with 0 just in case something comes along that is not one of these encryption methods then it will still be 0 and here's where I'm going to pad out the key. space there. All I'm doing in this statement, if the crypt key length is greater than zero, then while the string length of the key string is less than the crypt key length, which has been set in here, key string plus equals key string. So I'm just doubling the size until it is at least as long as this crypt key length. Compile that to make sure I don't have an I do have an error. What did I do? Oh, that should be a lowercase s. There we go. And let's run that. So remember that we still have, uh, I'll take that arch zip, I'll make that AES128. So remember that this key string is nowhere near long enough for an AES128, it's only one character long. I've artificially included some padding here to make the key longer. So let's compile and run. And everything works. And here it's showing the key that I have. Uh, it's doubled the length of that key until it has a key that is at least 128 bits long. You obviously need to have a long enough key for each of the encryption methods, and there are four, and as I've said here, for DES you need 56 bits, 128 for the AES-128, and 256 for the 256, and for the arch zip, the length doesn't matter. So, you can use something like this to pad the key if you want to, but remember that Unless you're decrypting it on your same platform and using exactly the same code to pad the key, then you won't be able to decrypt this. And if you're maybe sending this to another platform and you're going to try to decrypt it with PHP, then you would need to make sure that that PHP system has exactly the same key that was used to encrypt. And the key that's used to encrypt is this key after padding. So if you're going to use any kind of padding, then the system that decrypts must use the same padding as well as the same initial key. Let me demonstrate the next thing. I'll go with, uh, I'll go back to DES because that's nice and short. And I'll make sure that my key is long enough. So I should get no padding happening. I'll compile. I'll just go back and clear this history. And then I'll run. Now that's worked. And as we can see here, there's been no padding. The key is still A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Compile that. So I've made the key longer by adding H, I, J to the key. I run that. Still no padding happening on the key because it's obviously long enough. But if you look closely at this encoded data line, where it's actually taken the encrypted value and converted to hex. And I don't expect you to read everything. You can pause the video if you like and read this. But the encoded data is identical, even though the keys are different. And that is because only the first seven bytes of this key are being used. And anything else you add here is completely irrelevant. And I demonstrated that with DES because it meant I only had to type in seven characters here. But it's the same for all of the encryption methods. Only the first 56, 128, or 256 bytes of the key are used. And anything you type after that is just ignored. Now I've used a fairly simple method here of expanding the key simply by adding it to the end. I could also have simply padded this out with zero characters. So 
So I can pad this key out with nulls and I will get a result also with that. Now let me go back here. I'll just shorten this back up to a single character, which is not long enough. Compile and run. And you can see here, the key text size equals seven because that's where I stopped appending array size is equals eight. But when you print this, text equals A, array equals A, because those zeros at the end, the null characters, are simply ignored as far as printing the text is concerned. But I'm still able to encrypt and decrypt successfully. So that's just a different way of padding the key. But again, if you send this somewhere else or even decrypt on your own system, you will need to know how the key was padded as well as the original key. So the important information here is that you should make sure that the key is long enough for the encryption method used and that way you don't need to worry about how you're going to pad it at the other end if you're going to decrypt it somewhere and that's why the original example that i simply downloaded from the help file worked it had a seven character key which is long enough and it also gets the benefit of that null character so remember it started as a b c d e f g with crypt des let me just disable this padding so now this is effectively what I had initially. None of these other statements are going to matter. Compile and run. And remember this showed that it worked. But in my very first test to break this, I removed two characters, not one. So while this is seven characters, it's actually eight with the null terminator. And by simply removing one, I've made the visible string six, but there is still a null character, so there were still seven. And if I compile that, that will still work. And it did Let's clear this while I'm here. Now that null character is important. If you are transferring to another system, so I have here a six character key and MetaTrader is adding that null character at the end. If I sent this result to a different system and I want to decrypt it with something like PHP and I provide this key, which is only six characters long, that PHP system or any other third party system, unless it also null terminates strings, is not going to be able to decrypt this string given that key. So the help example provided is conveniently good enough to work with crypt DES. Everything was set up that it just worked. And having that extra character here meant that if I did take that result from this encryption and put it into another system, I would still have seven printable characters, which is all that's used. The null character at the end is the eighth, which is ignored, as I showed by increasing the size of the key. So this just works. That also will work. And in this example, it will encrypt and then decrypt because there is always that extra zero character at the end. But if I simply took this six character key to another system, I couldn't decrypt the result that I get from this. There is something more to the additional null character, which I'm not really showing here. I'll try to explain it. I've demonstrated the four different encryption methods. So there's crypt des, I can make that uh, AES 256. And if I put the padding back, uh, I'll actually use this one because you get to do, see something visible. Put that padding back, compile, run. And with AES 128, I still get some encryption happening and decryption and everything works. So I can use padding, but I recommend if you're going to do encryption, simply make sure the key is long enough to begin with. Otherwise, as I said, you have to make sure that any system you transfer this to has the same padding method on the key. But now there are other crypt methods, as I said earlier. Let me just go up here. There are also the hash methods. Now hashing isn't a two-way encryption. You can only hash and then you can't reverse the hash back to the original value. It's often used for something like passwords. So given your password, you would hash it, then you get a hashed value for that password. And when you want to compare a, an entered password, you hash the entered password, compare the two hash values together. And if they match, then you know that the password matches the original password, something like that. In fact, I'll erase most of this code and enter an example that shows what I'm talking about for the hash. Now I've made a few changes. Um, I've simply changed the variable name for text to password just to make this look more like I'm using a password type system. I'm using the MD5 crypt hash method 
and I've just changed the text to something simple. I still have the key string here, but keys are not used in hashing, but the function, the crypt encode function still has a place for keys, so I simply haven't bothered to remove that. Uh, and then I still have source, destination, and key arrays. So I still have string to char array for the key string, and as I said, it's not used, but I've left that in there. I'm also converting the password into the source array. I'm printing these statements, but they're really irrelevant now. Uh, where I've made the changes though, here in crypt encode, as I said, crypt method, source, key. Key is not used, but it's a placeholder. You could put almost anything in there. Uh, but this will hash source into destination. And then if res is greater than zero, that simply means this succeeded. And I'm going to print the encoded data, which is the hashed value using the array to hex for the destination. Then I'm resetting the SRC array because I need to make sure that has nothing left in it. So I'm simply using an array resize of that to zero. And then I'm simulating what would happen on a remote system that doesn't have that null terminating character on the strings by simply saying string to char array password source beginning at character zero for the length of the password string. So if we go back to this statement where I'm first converting password into a char array, there are no extra values and that converts the entire string, including that null terminator. This syntax by adding the length of the password will ignore the null terminator. So this SRC will effectively be one character shorter. And then I'm again crypt encode not crypt decode this time because hash is only an encoding method. Crypt method, source, key, destination, exactly the same statement. If res is greater than zero, then I print format and so on. So this will effectively encode twice, but we'll use password once with the null terminator and once without, which would simulate what happens on a remote system that doesn't have a null terminator on the strings. Compile and run. So now we can ignore this initial data uh, and the initial key. We can forget about those. What's important here is the encoded data, size 16, which makes sense because it is coming back as the same encoded length string, regardless of the password being passed in. And then this check encoded data, which is the one that I've encoded without the null terminator. And you can see that these two values are different. So if you use a typical password method where you encode, store the encoded value, and then encode the password entered. And if you don't have exactly the same method, then you're going to get a problem like this. So if you're trying to create hash values on a remote system and compare them to hash values created on MetaTrader or the reverse, you are going to have this problem. And so I recommend always using that syntax where you remove the null terminators from the strings and you'll always come up with this value. Uh, I'll just show you with a different hashing method to show the results are the same. Uh, I'll use a SHA-1 for example. And here again, we can see that the two hashed values are different. And I'll just do the, the last one, the SHA-256. And again, the results are different. So that null terminating character is important if you're moving data between MetaTrader and a remote system or from a remote system to MetaTrader because it means that those key strings or the string that you're hashing can be different. And now I've shown the error here for the actual hashing method, but also remember that if you're transferring an encrypted string that has the null terminator to a remote system and decrypting it, when it decrypts, it will again have that null character at the end. And if your remote system doesn't expect to have null characters at the end, it will effectively be a different string. So those are key things for you to remember if you're using encryption in MetaTrader 4 or 5. All of the code that I have here today is exactly the same between MetaTrader 4 and 5, and all the results are exactly the same. So if you're going to be using encryption, just keep these things in mind. I recommend maintaining consistency and always using this syntax for your string to char array, where you actually set the length rather than use the defaults. And do that also on the key. So in this statement here, I would also have string to char array, key string key, zero string length key. And that will make sure that you can see exactly what is in those hashed values. 
So I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, click the like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when we release new videos. Until next time, thank you for watching. Thank you.